Hello and welcome to day four of the 365 challenge. Today I'm going to carry on with a conversation that we started a couple of days ago regarding the chemistry of oil paints. If you work in oil paints a lot, you might have noticed that there might be one or two techniques that you can't quite figure out. Um, maybe you're getting results from your paints that you're not expecting and you don't know how to improve it or change that. So these little tips and hints might be able to help you. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go through a couple of mediums and solvents. Now, um, the difference between medium and solvent. The solvent is what you would wash your brushes with or reduce your paint with. Okay, um, so in our case, we would use the artist mineral, uh, sorry, artist tubes. A mineral tubes is not a good idea to use. Um, even odorless mineral tubes. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this because I know there's a lot of artists that will disagree with me, but I'm going to tell you what I've learned and, and from my experiment and what has come up. Um, mineral tubes leaves a residue, so you've got to be very careful with using mineral tubes. By all means, wash your brushes in mineral tubes, but don't mix your paint with mineral tubes. Even when you're washing your brushes in mineral tubes, go back and dip them in, in pure tubes or artist tubes or distilled tubes. They come in various different names, but it's the same substance before you then go back and dip your brush back into your paint. Now the difference between mineral tubes and artist tubes. Mineral tubes is a petroleum based product. It is actually a byproduct from the, the petroleum manufacturing um, process. Whereas uh, distilled tubes, artist tubes, pure tubes, whatever you want to call it, is actually distilled from the bark of, if I'm not mistaken, the pine tree. I know it comes from one of the trees and I think it's a pine tree. But anyway, it's a tree product, so it's a much more natural product. The advantage of that is that it's biodegradable. Now, I like to think that the activities that I'm partaking in in my art studio will reduce the environmental impact that I have because art, generally speaking, is quite heavy on the environment because of all the chemicals that we use and, um, and even the stuff that's in the actual paint itself can be damaging to the environment. So it's to me, it's one less thing that I'm doing to damage the environment is by making sure that I use a biodegradable um, solvent which of course is the the pure tubes mineral tubes is not biodegradable now the paint itself in terms of its biodegradability it depends some paints have got natural pigments and some paints don't if you see a paint a tube of paint that is labeled um, let's say for example cadmium yellow hue if it's got hue at the back of it it's usually a synthetic pigment that has been produced to simulate what cadmium yellow would look like um, if it doesn't have anything, if it just says cadmium yellow, then it's a natural pigment. And there will be those that will actually tell you that it's a mineral. Um, I know in the old days, for example, lapis lazuli was actually a mineral that was crushed down from a stone and, and ground down to a fine powder and mixed with oil to be used as paint. Those are natural things. They're not going to harm the environment. But some paints aren't and some paints are. Um, so I reduce that as much as possible by, number one, not mixing as much paint as, or more paint that I need, keeping paint to reuse if I need to, um, rather than throwing it away, and using mineral to, uh, uh, pure tubes and not mineral tubes. Um, so there are little things that you can do. Pure tubes, for example, you can throw it onto the grass and within three days the bacteria has broken it down and it doesn't do any damage to your grass. Mineral tubes, however, you will see a yellow mark on your grass if you keep throwing mineral tubes down onto your grass. Another way that you can also reduce environmental impact of your um, materials on, on your garden, etc., is to actually use a old egg carton. Now, what I do is every time after I've finished painting, I'll take the mineral to uh, the I keep saying mineral tubes, the pure tubes that I've been using, and I'll pour it into a container. After a little bit of time, the sludge, or the, the sediment, that all the, the paint that's been held in sub suspension, will sink to the bottom. You can then use, just pour off the top and you can reuse that for wash, brush washing. You can't use it to mix into your paint because it's got a bit of color in it, it's not completely pure. But you can use it, reuse it and reuse it until such time as it's now far too saturated before you have to throw it away. When you eventually do throw it away, just pour it over the top of a, an old egg carton. You, know, you buy your eggs in those, those uh, mushy cartons, throw it over that, let it soak into that and then you can throw that away then it's not getting into the water system and, and um, destroying the environment. So there are things that you can do to help um, your environment with your activity, lessen the impact of your activity. Getting on to mediums. Now there's a couple of different mediums that you can use in oil paintings. Um, the most commonly used ones will be Liquin, uh, which is Minjin Newton's version of Alkyd resin. Also the resin from a tree. It's just a much more liquefied version than, than the resin that you would get 
um, for example, in, um, in pesto medium, it's the same stuff, it's just a lot thicker. This is a much more um, liquid version of it. Now, liquid is preferred by a lot of artists because it's very quick drying. Now, one of the advantages of doing oil painting is to slow down the drying process. For example, when, uh, uh, when uh, compared to acrylic painting, acrylic dries very quickly because you have um, atmospheric t conditions, for example, the temperature, um, the, the, the humidity will all help your acrylic paints to either dry quicker or slower. You do get retarded mediums, you, you do get mediums that will make them dry quicker. Um, and the same goes for oil painting, but generally speaking, oil painting dries a lot slower than acrylic painting. So it leaves your painting wetter for longer, which makes the painting process a lot more pliable, a lot easier. You can, however, speed up the, the um, drying process by using something like liquid, because liquid or alkyd resin um, will dry a lot quicker uh, liquid will dry a lot quicker than linseed oil now there's a lot of difference between linseed oil and liquid in, in the way that you use it as well so we'll take one at a time the advantages of liquid besides the drying time is that it doesn't have a lot of effect on the colors so your whites for example will dry white and which is it seems kind of weird because the, the liquid itself is is really yellow but it doesn't dry when mixed with paint it doesn't dry that yellowy color so whites will stay white um, the other alternative to liquid is linseed oil you can keep your paint wet for days if you're using linseed oil um, this is very highly prized by people that do a lot of glazing because glazing needs to stay wet um, for a long period of time while you do your glaze layers so obviously linseed oil would be prefer preferable for that um, if however you're doing a lot of very thick uh, say for example palette knife work, a lot of textured stuff, then linseed oil is not a good idea to do because um, it, it slows down the drying process and because your paint is thick it's going to be slower drying anyway. L uh, linseed oil also has the disadvantage that it can turn white slightly yellow if you're not careful and the reason for that is because throughout the drying process the oil gets squeezed to the surface because the paint will dry from the inside out and the oil squeezes to the painting surface and you get this microscopically thin film of oil on top of your painting once it's dry and, and of course if it's white paint then that slightly yellow film will slightly yellow the, the white. Um, then we have safflower oil. Now safflower oil is really nice, it doesn't have the same um, yellowing properties that linseed oil has got but it does keep your painting wetter for longer. It's not quite as long as linseed oil but it does keep your painting wetter for longer as well. So. It's actually up to you, and the nice thing about it is that all of these, and there's more, there's a lot of other um, oils as well, but these are the three that I like to use most, and you can interchange them. You can do one layer with one oil and another layer with another oil. For example, when I'm doing glaze um, paintings, I'll do my early layers with liquid, my, my dead layer and my grisel layers, I use liquid, and then when I'm getting onto the glaze layers, then I will use the linseed oil or the safflower oil, but usually it's the linseed oil because I like to keep it um, wetter for longer. And then in between my linseed oil layers, layers I'll put a layer of liquid um, because I like to separate my colors with a layer of oil. So it'll be a layer of linseed oil with the color in it and then a plain layer of liquid over that and then more linseed oil with color and so it goes until I've built up the, the layers that I needed to build up. One of the big reasons that I'd like to talk about solvents is because I hear a lot of stories um, about art teachers teaching artists the wrong thing and I put that in inverted commas because I hesitate to say that I know everything and what I'm saying is right and by all means if I'm if I'm wrong then correct me um, I'm, I'm by no means the absolute guru on this but if you have a look at all the different things that I've come across that that our teachers are teaching the, the students to do um, the one that totally freaks me out is is to wash their brushes and mix their paint in soapy water. Now, that is a problem unless you're using water-soluble oils, which you can get. If you're using water-soluble oils, I don't speak on that. I use oil-soluble oils. Um, but and if you're using oils, and it's not the water-soluble kind, then you can't possibly put soapy water into your oils. The soap is going to mask the effect that the water has on the oils. Oils and water don't mix like anything, pour oil on top of water and it will float. Oil and water don't mix. And now you're going to be adding soap to it. Sometimes it's just a little bit dishwashing liquid that they apparently use, um, which is going to break down the oil content. So you're going to get the impression that your oil has been broken down, like it would if you get a, if you add turps to it. But the, the chemical reaction that's going on on a molecular level is very different. And you're going to cause your paint to become brittle and crack easier 
and that bonding process that happens with the actual pigments of the oil paint itself is not going to happen very well. So your painting is going to lose elasticity, it's going to become um, rigid, it's going to crack easier and over time it will begin to flake and your painting is not going to have the longevity that it needs to have. The other thing that artists teach their students is that it's fine to use mineral terps. Now, again, there's, I'm going to get a lot of flack on this because there are a lot of artists that use mineral terps and don't see an immediate disadvantage to it. The disadvantage of using mineral terps is relatively long term. It does have an effect that's much more destructive on your paint molecules than pure terps is. Um, it also has the effect of leaving a bit of a residue on the top of your painting, which over time can yellow and dull and, and cause a bit of a problem. So, like I said before, pure terps is the way to go, and by all means, wash your brushes in mineral terps, but because it is cheaper, mineral terps is cheaper than pure terps, I get it. So, wash your brushes in mineral terps, but then make sure you wash them or rinse them out at least in pure terps before you dip them into your paint. Um, you do get a thing called odorless uh, artist terps or odorless mineral terps. Um, I have a bit of a problem with odorless terps. I do understand that we don't want to smell because the, the chemical release uh, evaporation process that um, terps goes through does cause a bit of breathing if you get um, if you breathe too much of it and you can have breathing problems so you've got to work in a well ventilated room whatever you do but now if you go ahead and use um, odorless mineral terps then you're going to assume that because you can't smell it that you don't have the same damaging effect uh, of breathing it in so you're not going to be so aware of it but the, actually the opposite is true it is just as is damaging to breathe in odorless terps than it is to breathe in mineral terps or pure terps. The only problem with the odorless terps is that you can't smell it, so you're not aware of what you're breathing in. So it's possible that you could be doing some damage to yourself, um, and if you're not already um, allergic to terps, you will become allergic to terps. So you've got to make sure that you're using a terp that you can smell, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion. Use a terp that you can smell because then you know what you're breathing in and you can make sure that you are not getting in too much of the fumes and make sure that you're working in a ventilated room, open windows, open doors, um, have a breeze going through so that you can get all the, the, the noxious gases out of your art room. The way that I'm talking it makes it sound like you, you need to wear a mask and gloves when you're painting and although those things would not be a bad idea, it's not that imperative, it's not that dangerous. You've just got to be careful and be aware of what your terps are. Terps is the only thing that we use that is actually um, can have negative effects if we use it in a, in a room that's not very well ventilated. So I hope that helps you with understanding a little bit about solvents and mediums. And in the next talk I'm going to be talking about the fat over lean process. Um, which takes your solvents and mediums into account. So hang around for day five and I'll see you then.